tax. How are you doing? You should look at tax rates and the the. I'll show you. I'll send you a chart. In a minute. No, I'm. I get it. I mean, that's what has changed, oh, the is Bush, my point. The Bush rates? No, the oh. Reagan rates, starting in 1980. Oh, before the, the, the relationship rates. goes crazy. Yeah. I would like oh, to see that, actually. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. See Not on this one. See has it. No, well, could get it. me everything. <laughs> yeah, but so does everybody. So um, I'll just, I'm just going to give an overview, and then, and then Paul wants to say something, John wants to say something. Williston wanted to say something. Anybody else? The all male review. How's our frame here, Ann? It's good. Okay. You guys good? You guys, I feel so lonely over here. Well, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter. Well, the chart. The chart it relates to ours. Yeah. So I'm going to walk through. I feel like Ross Perot here. Yeah. Moved slightly less wealthy, but. Yeah. You guys ready? Free press ready. Thank you everybody for coming. And, and before I get started, I want to thank my colleagues. And and many of you are here. Others are on the bill and and not here. These days, it requires quite a deal of courage to talk about increasing revenue, and, and I really appreciate folks standing with me. I have no doubt that most of the 180 members of the General Assembly talked a lot about jobs during the last campaign, and I'd be willing to bet that drumbeat will be back when we go door to door this fall. And in the meantime, I have to wonder where are the ideas to create jobs? H715 would create nearly 300 good quality jobs by returning to an idea we've discussed at length the all fuels efficiency. You may remember this was an idea with the enthusiastic backing of then Senate pro tem Peter Shumlin. He loved this idea until he had to fund it. And he was right to like the plan. Even in our mild winter, Vermonters are stretching to keep up with heating bills. Wages aren't keeping up with the cost of living and far too many Vermonters are struggling. While more and more the idea of saving money through energy efficiency is gaining acceptance, Vermonters, by and large, don't have the disposable income to make this investment. We can help. Increasing efficiency of our old housing stock saves between $600 and $1,900 a year, every year. It is a quick payback cycle, so the state should assist more people with the upfront costs and enable our families to save money year after year down the road. And while we save people money and we create jobs, we also further the critical goal of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Last week, renowned climate author Bill McKibben was in House Energy and Natural Resources, and he urged the legislature to aggressively address our leaky homes. He said it is the best bang for our carbon reduction buck. And doing this will help meet our own goal set in the legislature in 2008, where we agreed to try and increase efficiency in 25% of our homes by 2020. We have to pick up the pace if we want to make this deadline. So how do we pay for it? Nobody likes to raise taxes. Very few even want to talk about new taxes, and for good reason. In the last 20 years, as this chart reveals, buying power for average Vermonters has grown by a meager 3.7%. You can see the median household, come, household income is basically flat. Paying more taxes is not a realistic option for a great majority of Vermonters. But just because most of us haven't seen a boom doesn't mean the picture is bleak for everyone. This comes from the T Department of Taxes. Those at the top, and this is 2003 compared to 2010, a snapshot of, of where the income has grown. And this is 2009 compared to 2010. So in the, in the heart of the recession, you see the same basic shape. Those at the top of the income spectrum have seen their income grow by 60, 70, 80 percent and higher between 2003 and 2010, and the trend goes back even further. And even as the economy tanked, those at the, the top saw a jump of 7 to 15 percent, while most Vermonters watched their wages decline. It's no wonder we see a clamoring for greater equality. People recognize inherent unfairness when they see it, and these graphs tell the story of shameful inequality. Despite this backdrop, for years we've been hammered in Montpelier for having, quote, the highest tax rates in the country. 
Critics conveniently ignore the reality of effective tax rates. And so we take the political heat without getting the revenue. And while the governor and others tout our progressive income tax structure, this is only one part of the tax picture. On closer examination, it's clear that after all of our taxes are paid, the effective tax rates for Vermonters is basically flat. And we have this in a handout, you can see it. H715 brings the effective tax rate for those in the top two brackets closer to their marginal rate. We do this by closing a loophole that currently benefits wealthy filers. We have five income tax brackets. As you move up the ladder, our current structure allows you to pay at each level as you rise. Most households aren't aware of this because they fall into the first bracket or maybe the second bracket. So they, they as you wait on your way up, your first, uh, you, you, so if you're a millionaire and you fall into this bracket in the end, you pay 3.55% on your first $57,000 of income. Then you pay 6.8% on the next 80,000, 7.8% on the income in the 137 dollars to $209,000 range, and so on. This means, while we get grief from McClowry and his friends, angry that 8.95% is too high, the effective rate for those in the top bracket is actually 6.8%. So this bill proposes to close the loophole by saying those in either of the top two brackets cannot take advantage of all of the steps as they climb the ladder. For those that fall in the second highest bracket here, their income up to $209,250 for a couple married, filing jointly, will be taxed at the 7.8% rate applicable in the third bracket. And any income above the $209,000 is at the 8.8% level. In the highest bracket, those Folks get to stop here at the fourth tier and pay 8.8% on all their income up to 373000 and applying the 8.9% rate to the remainder of their income. The average change for this proposal is $2,800 for those in the fourth tier and $4,750 for those in the top bracket. In keeping with the governor's desire to leave broad-based taxes alone, this change impacts fewer than 4,000 tax filers. We are asking those few Vermonters who have enjoyed the boom to pay a little more. We do not, they do not need tax loopholes, but Vermonters do need good quality jobs. We need to make heating our homes more affordable, and we dare not ignore climate change much longer. For these reasons, we hope H715 will be given a fair hearing and support from our colleagues. I'd like to turn it over to uh, well, any of the co-sponsors here. Representative Poirier from Barrie wanted to say a few words. Paul? Yeah. Well, first of all, Chris, I want to thank you for doing all the legwork on this. I, as an individual, uh, in the last three years, have uh, attempted unsuccessfully, along with the, my colleagues here, to raise additional revenues uh, so that we could uh, protect many of the programs that were earmarked 20 years ago by, a, the, de by the Democratic uh, leadership to protect the most vulnerable people. And over the years, we have found, because of our deficit, we, we've, we have made substantial cuts to programs that really target, were targeted at the low end of the economic cycle. This year, uh, you know, with, the, with Chris's initiative, we've identified a way to try to help, again, people who are uh, in, you know, moderately uh, income brackets in Vermont to help pay with their fuel assistance the idea is that to pay for it, because the whole thing about heating oil is going to be a continuous battle in Washington. So we need to try to find a way, you know, to make to sustain our own fund. And Chris has come up with a way, and I, I signed on to this bill because I've heard from people who are doing very well during the last three or four years, and they have really, you know, saying, I can't believe you haven't gone and, you know, and asked me to pay more. Uh, we can always sarcastically pass it off. Oh, if you're an individual, you just make, make a you can make a voluntary contribution. The fact is that many many people who've done well in the last few years were anticipating a a an increase in their uh, in their income taxes to help uh, offset some of the uh, the difficult cuts that were made. And so this year we're starting much earlier. It's much better organized. And, and I want to really commend uh, Chris Pearson for taking the lead on it, and I'm, pl I'm really pleased to be a sponsor of it. Thanks, Paul. 
God. <clears throat> Creating new jobs, bringing energy efficiency to Vermont households, and a fairer sharing of the taxation in Vermont. That's win, win, win as far as I'm concerned, and that's why I'm a sponsor, co-sponsor of this bill. Thank you. Soundbite man, John Moran. <laughs> um, would anybody else like to? Jim, any of those? Thank you very much, everyone here in attendance. Um, I'm here bringing a, another um, level to this conversation. You've gotten the, the perhaps even glaring details. My beautiful bride and high school sweetheart of 50 years and I are a team. When I fail, she pulls. When she fails, I pull, we pull together. We've just been called Vermont Strong. We all need to pull together. Um, as we have demonstrated in our several um, recent Vermont flooding tragedies, uh, that when we do, we get lots done. We have a team here of Vermonters, 600 plus thousand strong. Some of us need help and others can give it. That for me is the basis of this um, bill, is teamwork. We are Vermont strong. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, well, if, if there are any questions, we'll take a couple. How much does this raise? Uh, Seventeen point six million, thereabouts. All, and it would all go to. Uh... The way that this bill is drafted, it would go to the Public Service Department to create all fuels efficiency initiative. And uh, how would that actually play out on the street in terms of you know what? What, what do you envision being done with, by the department with that money? Well, you know, it gives them a lot of leeway to figure it out. But the basic premise is that you need money to, you would give families grants to wrap their houses. And um, it, it creates jobs in an ongoing way. And, and like I said, it creates savings for those families. The issue is we, we're doing okay. We need to do more with re weatherization, which are more means. Um, tested programs, they're, they're more mean dependent. I'm looking at some, some expert help in the back. This would sort of open that up more to, to middle class families. Um, folks who, you know, maybe aren't on assistance necessarily, but they don't have the disposable income to make this investment. And what's the upper income, household income cap then on? On the program, that's not stipulated. It would be, you know, the public service department would figure it out. We're, we're, we're basically saying, you need money to do this, here it is. Come back to, with us with a plan. They've been thinking a lot about it, um, you know, and there are others who can, who can answer in more details, maybe offline. Is there a time limit on this? No, it would be ongoing. The current uh, Efficiency Vermont taxes electricity bills. Yep. This would tax income. Yep. Um, why not just tax fuel oil or, you know, essentially, yeah, I mean, the point is that we, we debated that at great length, didn't get far. Um, you know, you, this is a sensible investment, this creates jobs, and you need a pot of money to get it going. So is this the perfect solution? I don't know. Does this address a growing sense that there's an inequality, um, you know, that's a, a real concern for our community? I think it does. How many sponsors do you have? Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I knew someone was going to ask me that. I want to say it's about 10. Um, a good deal of them are right here. H715, you can, you can check it out. A little late in the session, don't you think, to introduce this fraction? Uh, well, it was, it was filed a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, there's a lot of things moving. Just last week, McKibben was here saying this is the way to go. Um, I think people are looking for ideas. One of the things that struck me is that we haven't heard a lot about bills that are aimed at creating jobs. And, and this one does that um, in a very concrete way. And so I, we thought it was kind of made sense to bring this forward, see if we could get some discussion going. 11 sponsors. 11 sponsors, thank you. If I could add one thing, Chris. Of course, just to, yeah, for just, you know, just to that question, I mean, I, I, I signed on to the bill because I've, I've, I really believe we need 
when we start seeing the budget develop, we're going to identify areas of cuts and programs that we, you know, are going to be cut because of this, the argument we're going to have heard for the last few years, you know. Well, we still have a shortfall in the budget. I think the last number I saw was like $40 million uh, that, you know, we're going to have to make up. And the, while this money is dedicated for fuel assistance to, you know, to people to get into weatherizing, but the idea is you're getting people to work and people are going to save money, so that money they can use to offset food and everything else. But what we have failed to do in the past, those of us who have been pushing for a more progressive way of, of, of raising money, is that we've waited literally until the budget comes to the floor and we've made our case on the floor. And it, the argument has always been, well, you should have brought this to us sooner. We should have had time to go through the committee process. And so we are now presenting this idea of how we can raise $17 million on this. And so we're hoping that through the leadership of the speaker and will we'll give a voice to those of us who have felt that we have just been, you know, uh, looking at cutting over the last few years and not looking at revenue enhancements from those who have done well. So we're way ahead of where we've been in the past. Whether the money we identify later that this is the best place to put it, we, don't, we won't know until what the appropriations bill you know, works its way through its process and sees where it goes. But we've identified a money source, a way to do it, a way that we believe is fair, in a way that even wealthy people in this state think it's fair. And that's why we're, you know, we're presenting this today. Well, it sounds like uh, uh, you have a broader vision. I mean, Chris is talking about spending the money in a very specific place, which is essentially on home weaponization, <clears throat> right? You, Paul, are, are seem to be indicating you had uh, other goals for, the, for this money. No, I think I, I signed on because Bill, I mean, not Bill, excuse me, uh, Chris, you know, talked to me about it and said, this is really, you know, I think where we, we could use, the, the money could go. I understand what that is. I'm, my main interest was to, to, for all of us to unite around a, a one-way source to raise additional revenue. And I think that's for a legislative debate where the best place to spend the money. And clearly, with what we went through this past winter, trying to figure out if the federal government was going to keep its commitment in weatherization to the level that we had in previous years, a lot of talk amongst a lot of our colleagues was we need to do something to have a stable, you know, annual revenue source for weatherization. So that's kind of what brought this to the forefront. But I think, you know, as we found out, we did get our full schedule of, of financing. So I, I mean, every one of us could find ways to offer, to, you know, to put $17 million to help programs. But I'm on board with, with this, but at the same time, I'm also on board and willing to, you know, when we see the budget, to talk with my colleagues and saying, you know, you know where's the best place to use this money? But job creation is crucial, and weatherization creates jobs. And I know in central Vermont, the central Vermont community action people who do most of the weatherization were facing decisions to have to cut back their, their working staff. And if we had this in place, it would have been some kind of a guarantee that their programs, you know, would have continued. So The, the other thing that hasn't been mentioned, but one of the advantages to this route is that it, it's thought to generate $28 million of local economic activity. So, you know, you leverage more um, by creating jobs and getting the, the materials to buy for weatherization tend to be bought locally and, and so there's a ripple effect that, that's quite positive. Why not raise twice as much or five times as much or ten times as much? Um, well, a lot of us wondered that. Um, and the answer is if you are looking at the kind of equality structure or, or current inequality, I would argue, the fact is there are not a lot of wealthy families in Vermont. So while you recognize you know, some of the numbers I've given you, if, if, for me, I would say, I'm not interested in asking uh, average Vermont households who've seen their median income be pretty steady for 25 years to contribute more. I think, uh, I think the economy is doing that on its own and, and stressing those families more and more. So for me, I'd like to, you know, I have kind of a limited pool um, that it's difficult to raise money on. Anybody? I mean, How many houses do you think you could weather up? You know, I wasn't able to find that number, and I apologize. Um, It'd be free to, to the lower it would be a grant program. For people in the I think so. Again, it, it gives the Public Service Department a fair amount of leverage to figure that out. But I that, think 300 jobs. 
Um, smarter people than me have a formula that they created years ago when this debate was live, and that's what they tell me. I do, yeah. Morgan somewhere has it for you. All right. Where's the bill? The bill is in Ways and Means, H715. All right. Thank you. Everybody here, thank you very much.